Welcome to another episode of Potion Sword Run. Original Seed coming at you from my living room. And it didn't take that long for the media to show their bias, especially now that it came to Call of Duty. IGN giving it a 4 out of 10. We see you. But before we begin, again, do not like this video. I am still wanted for stealing my neighbor's cats. They keep on knocking. And I won't let them in. Look, I know what Call of Duty is. I haven't bought a Call of Duty on launch since I don't know when. You know, like Black Ops 2 maybe. You know, it's become what it's become. But gamers, we all know Call of Duty is like the action flick of the year. It's a solid 8 out of 10. You know, 7 out of 10 if the story sucks or if it's missing features. But this one is not missing features. It has a story. It has multiplayer. It has zombies. That's all the things that real Call of Duty fans really want. Now, we'll see if the multiplayer holds up and all that stuff, you know, as time goes on. But a 4 out of 10 from IGN, now that it is owned by Microsoft, is clear bias. Clear as day. 4 out of 10. Now, a 4 out of 10 is for games that are launch broken, missing features, have a bunch of bugs. Not just a game that's owned by Microsoft. And that's the reason why IGN feels safe to do it. One thing you got to remember about IGN or people who review these games is that they're just like you and me. Just some random ass fool who got a job trying to be a journalist. That's all it is. Now, the thing is, the person who hired them is probably like-minded. Because they want to hire people who they get along with, you know, who they jowl with. It just so happens that they're a bunch of freaking Sony fanboys, it seems. And it's safe to be Sony fanboys, as we can see all the games getting 10s out of 10s and 9 out of 10s, even though they're a broken mess. But yet, when it comes to Microsoft exclusives now, Call of Duty, even though before it'll be getting 9 out of 10s, 10 out of 10s, 8 out of 10s. Now, it's a 4 out of 10. Wow, just like that. So... The thing is, whenever you see the reviews from these media sites, you got to understand, it's like a hive mind. They all think alike because you want to work with people who think alike. You know, you want to get along. So when you start seeing all the bias, they don't see it because they're living in it, you know? To them, everything else is crazy. Either way, wherever they're at, wherever their bias is at, they don't see it because they're all reinforcing each other's ideas. But now that we have independent media, gamers, hobbyists, whatever, being able to see clearly as day and spread the word, I know that their propaganda isn't going to hold water anymore. Everybody sees it. And the good thing about it is, just like me, we don't really pay too much attention to these sites when it comes to the games we play. Because we know the type of games that we want. We see it with our clear eyes. We can get reviews from other people, unbiased people. And they know that. So in order for them to get clicks, in order for people like us to talk about them for their relevancy, they need to do things like this. Giving Call of Duty a 4 out of 10. And we know it's only because of an Xbox, uh, an Xbox game now. Because they own the Activision. They own it, you know? We know that's why it is. Because we've seen it. We've seen how they operate. Yeah, they're still going to make a lot of money. They're still going to get their clicks. They're still, you know, have their space in the media. But at least now we can counter their narrative. And at least we know... Whatever they say doesn't really matter because people are still going to buy Call of Duty. I mean, it's like the next installment. And then next year they'll buy the next one. It is what it is. Now that's going to do it for this episode. Remember, when you're just a fan, 